Welcome to another episode of The Warning Woods. If you enjoy the podcast, please consider giving it five stars and writing a review. Reviews help spread the podcast to more listeners. If you want more creepy content, follow me on Instagram and TikTok at The Warning Woods. I'm Miles Thomas Tridal, and this story is called The Cemetery. Brianna's group called themselves The Cemetery Creeps. Micah and Charlize, Brianna's besties since the third grade, invented the moniker. Although Brianna said it was childish, it stuck anyway. The trio spent many a chilly Friday night exploring cemeteries within driving distance of their town. Sup, creeps, Charlize said, catching up with Micah and Brianna walking out of school on a Thursday afternoon. She put one arm around each of them. Brianna shrugged her friend's hot pink fingernails off her shoulder. Well, Char, don't you look cute today. Are you excited for cheer practice? She mocked. Hey, don't hate me because I'm pretty. Turns out they don't give out scholarships for dressing like Wednesday Adams. Brianna stopped and faced Charlize with an expression worthy of Wednesday herself. Micah stepped back awkwardly. His eyes switched nervously between his friends like his grandmother's Felix the Cat clock. A snort burst Brianna's moody vibe and all three of them laughed. You ladies want to hear a joke? Micah asked. Both of the girls rolled their eyes, but he ignored them. How does a zombie become a priest? If I don't laugh, I'm going to murder you, Charlize threatened. Micah flashed a sarcastically horrified frown. They go to cemetery. Get it? After a moment's pause, Brianna rolled her eyes and said, Do not laugh at that, Char. Not a chance, Charlize replied. No, because, like, cemetery sounds like seminary and he's a zombie, get it? "Uh Uh-huh, yeah, we get it, said Char. If this little open mic is over, I have some fresh info for you two. Let me guess, they've scientifically proved Micah's puns aren't funny? Brianna asked, poking Micah in the ribs. Micah frowned for real. No, way better than that. I can't believe we haven't heard about this before, Charlize started. The cheerleader in her seeped through her voice. There's a freaking abandoned graveyard behind St. Michael's. Are you serious? asked Brianna. Yes, we were talking about family history and sociology today, and Brian Newer said he has a great-great-grandpa buried there. He thinks his family are the only ones that ever visit. Like, not even the priest goes back there. How come? Micah asked. That's the best part, Shar exclaimed with a little jump that made her earrings jingle. The church hid it away because they think there's some kind of evil there. Brian doesn't believe in any of that, but he said that like a hundred years ago, the priests were so scared of the cemetery that they put in a bunch of hedges to hide it from the public. His whole family has to get blessed before they can visit it. Church rules. Dude, what kind of evil is powerful enough to scare priests? Couldn't they just bless it away or something? Asked Micah. I don't know, but you want to find out? Charlize asked. Micah nodded eagerly but Brianna hesitated. She searched for an excuse, any reason they shouldn't explore the St. Michael's Cemetery, but turning down such an opportunity would be too out of character. She would be lying to say that the idea didn't excite her, but seeking out evil forces was a twist on their hobby she wasn't quite comfortable with. Not wanting to hesitate too long, she answered, Okay, I'm in. Tomorrow night? Tomorrow night. Charlize agreed. I'd pick you guys up, but parking a car there might seem suspicious. Should we just walk and meet there? Sure, it's not too far from my place, Micah said. It's not too far from me either, said Brianna. Perfect. See you tomorrow. After waving goodbye to her friends, Brianna walked to her car. She was glad she decided to drive that day. She needed to make a stop before going home. Brianna only had to go a little out of her way to get to St. Michael's. The old church stood less than a mile from school. It had a stern facade, a face familiar to many of its weathered congregants. Cracks ran through the stones like wrinkles on a scowling old woman. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. But St. Michael's seemed to say, Stay away, I'm tired. Well, there are the hedges, Brianna mumbled to herself as she parked the car across from the church. She crossed the street and approached the hedges behind the church. She had planned on squeezing between the plants, but up close, she saw how dense they were. 
The webs of tiny branches and waxy leaves had woven themselves together. A brick wall would have been easier to climb over. Excuse me, a man's voice came from behind her. Rihanna froze, but immediately realized how guilty that made her look. With a deep breath, she turned and casually waved to the priest standing behind her. Oh, hi there, she said with a sweet smile. I was just looking for the cemetery, he read her mind. Come, you'll never get in that way. Ordinarily, Brianna might have hesitated before following a strange man, priest or not, into an empty church, but he opened the building's side door and went through before she could consider the danger. He said, The other priests would happily forget the old cemetery exists. You're lucky I'm here today and not Father Morris. You're not afraid of the cemetery? Brianna asked. Of the cemetery? No. Of some of its residents? Well... Scared might not be the right word, but I am wary. Vigilant, you might say. Through here, he pushed open a short round door that appeared to date back to the church's original construction. Sunlight poured in through the doorway, blinding Brianna for a moment. She squinted to relieve her eyes, and when she opened them, the priest was ushering her out. I hope you find what you're looking for, he said. Just knock on this door when you're finished. It locks but I'll let you in. Brianna thanked him as she walked into the afternoon sun. Then she turned, suddenly realizing she didn't know the priest's name. Hey, what's your... But he had already closed the door behind her. She heard something metal slide into place. It didn't sound like an automatic lock, but more like a bolt being manually engaged. She was a little unnerved by the thought of that priest locking her out. He had made it sound like the door locked on its own, the graveyard was barely recognizable as such. The grass was overgrown and matted in places like an unkept beard. Plants refused to grow in a few spots, revealing the earth's skin in dusty, bare sores. With a quick scan, Brianna speculated no more than 50 graves were contained within the hedges. Not one headstone had been properly maintained. The markers in the best condition were covered in yellow-green moss and leaning to one side or another. Those in the worst condition were craggy nubs barely protruding from the earth. The derelict cemetery looked as if a heavy rain could unearth the whole thing in a mudslide of stones and bones. A toppled headstone with a familiar name caught Brianna's eye. In a large, traditional font, Father Morris had been carved into the marble. Wasn't he the priest the other guy mentioned? Brianna tried to remember. She wondered if the deceased might be a relative. Still, you would think if a descendant of the original Father Morris oversaw the church now, he would take better care of his family member's grave. Was whatever supposedly haunted this place really that scary? Brianna nearly reached the back of the cemetery when she noticed a grave in the posterior left side. It really wasn't the grave she noticed so much as the dried up rose bushes surrounding it. Their thorny, dead branches reminded her of barbed wire. An irresistible compulsion dared her to approach them. The attraction felt taboo, somewhat unholy. She had almost reached the thorn-guarded grave when Brianna heard a muted metal scrape behind her. The church door opened, and a priest she didn't recognize appeared in the threshold. Oh, uh, Father Morris? asked Brianna. Confusion wrenched the man's face. No, Father Morris is... The priest paused, and his confusion morphed into concern. Come with me, young lady. Now, please. With a regretful glance at the magnetic rose bushes, Brianna obeyed. You're not Father Morris? She asked once inside. No, dear, I most certainly am not. I'm Father Gregory. St. Michael's is my charge. I'm sorry if I'm not supposed to be here, Brianna apologized. The other priest let me in. He said it was okay. The other priest? Father Gregory asked. My dear, I'm the only priest here. I'm the only person here, besides yourself. It was Brianna's turn to look confused. But, Father Gregory gently put his hands on her shoulders. You must not come here again. Please. I'm not angry with you. It's your safety that concerns me. How long has it been since your last confession? 
I'm sorry? Confession, my dear. Are you not a Catholic? No, I'm not really anything, she answered. Father Gregory stopped walking, crossed himself, and closed his eyes. Even so, he said, would you allow me to bless you? The request made Brianna uncomfortable, but it seemed rude to turn him down. She allowed him to pray a short blessing over her, and he let her go out through the front of the church. Bring the ladder over here, Michael whispered. It was Friday night, the day after Brianna's visit to the St. Michael's Cemetery. She'd had over 24 hours to tell her friends about it, but chose not to. Parts of the visit had been odd, yes. She pondered the question of the mystery priest who let her in. Was he an imposter? A ghost? She knew one thing for sure. He had been friendly and kind to her, not evil. She had found no reason to think anything dangerous lurked behind St. Michael's. The latter made a tinny racket as Charlize dragged it across the patchy lawn of St. Michael's. Brianna had suggested bringing it without letting on that she knew about the impassable hedges. How did you carry this thing all the way here? Charlize asked Micah. Brianna, afraid the noise would alert someone in a nearby house, rushed to grab the bottom of the ladder and help Charlize carry it to Micah. Once it was in place, Brianna volunteered to be the first to climb over. Eager to discover the evil spirits, Micah joked, laughing a little too loudly for the stillness of night. Just saving you the trouble of admitting you're too cowardly to do it yourself, Brianna retorted. Charlize giggled, giving away her cheerleading alter ego. Micah rolled his eyes and held the ladder steady as Brianna climbed. She jumped off the top, over the hedge, and rolled to the side to soften the six-foot drop. Your turn, she whispered over the greenery. Metallic footsteps clanged rhythmically before Micah's head appeared. He opted to roll over the top of the hedge, getting his hands and one of his cheeks scraped up in the process. His landing was, Brianna admitted, smoother than her own, though. Don't forget to grab the rope, Micah told Charlize when her face appeared above the hedges. Got it, thanks. She teetered on top of the ladder. In one hand, she held the end of the rope Micah had tied to the top of the ladder so they could pull it to the other side when they were ready to leave. Come on, jump, Micah encouraged. I can't, the ladder's too wobbly. There's no one to hold it anymore, Charlize pointed out. We can catch you, Brianna said. She grabbed the sleeve of Micah's t-shirt and dragged him to the base of the hedge. Just let yourself fall. Charlize nodded and shrugged her shoulders into her ears. She was about to topple over the hedge when her eyes bulged. She pointed a trembling finger at something behind Micah and Brianna. They spun around and saw what had terrified Charlize. In the center of those dead rose bushes stood a woman. Her translucent form was entirely white and produced a soft, hazy glow. Her unblinking eyes bore into them. It was impossible to tell her age. She looked both ancient and eternally youthful. Focused on the apparition, neither Micah nor Brianna heard Charlize's choked cry as the ladder tipped out from beneath her feet. The weight of her body, amplified by gravity, knocked them both to the ground. Micah struggled to his feet while yelling, the ladder, get the ladder over here. Charlize's mouth hung open in a wordless apology. The rope had slipped from her hand when she fell. It was now lodged between twigs on the top of the hedge. Micah jumped to grab it, only to find it too far out of reach. Crackling sounds made Micah turn back around. The cemetery creeps stood paralyzed as the rose bushes' thorny branches spread apart like bony fingers of unclasping hands. The white woman held her gaze as an opening formed between the plants. The hedges scraped their skin as the teens pressed their backs against them. They were cornered. The white woman took her first step toward them. Now Brianna felt it. The malevolence. It seeped from the woman like poison gas. With each step she took towards the cornered teens, they became more afraid, and the malevolence grew a little stronger. Brianna could see it. It was in the haze that surrounded the apparition. Wispy tendrils of hatred and malice rose off her as if she were saturated in liquid evil, and the teen's fear was the hot summer sun. 
What do we do? asked Micah. Brianna fumbled for an answer. Without a way to get over the hedges, she could only think of one other option. There's a door, over there, she said, pointing to the little old door the mysterious priest had guided her through. She didn't remember Father Gregory locking the bolt the day before, and hoped it might still be open now. It might get us into the church. The white woman continued to close in on them. She approached with a steady intention. She knew they were trapped. The misty tendrils outlining her form expanded with each step she took. Come on, let's go, Brianna encouraged her immobilized companions. When they didn't immediately react, she grabbed their shirts and pulled. She almost had to drag them to the church door. The white woman howled like a tornado when they reached it. The sound made Brianna want to cry. She tugged on the door. It wouldn't budge. Let me try, Micah said, roughly shoving her aside. He put everything he had into the pole, his whole body, but the door remained closed. He swore. They all turned back to face the woman, the inescapable master of their fate. Brianna heard the familiar scraping of metal on metal and the door opened behind them with a miraculous, rusty squeal. The priest, the mysterious, nameless one who had initially let her in, was standing in the doorway when Brianna turned around. Come, child, get inside, he said. Brianna didn't have to be told twice. Micah and Charlize bounced off each other as they tried to get through the door, but before they passed through it, it slammed in their faces. What the hell? cried Charlize. As if in answer, the door creaked open again. The priest's expression was serious, almost angry. Only the blessed may escape the graveyard. She has been marked by God. But you, he said, pointing to Charlize and Micah, you have been marked by someone else. His eyes left the teens and gazed hollowly at the white woman. She smiled hideously and her tendrils writhed. Bree, don't leave us, Charlize begged. Their eyes met, and Brianna first looked at her friend apologetically. Then her face shifted slightly. Determination pinched her eyes and pursed her lips. Brianna grabbed the handle and leaned back, holding the door open with all her weight. Run! she cried. Her friend stumbled inside as the priest tried to push her off the door. Once everyone got through, Brianna allowed herself to be shoved backward, but unleashed a powerful kick on the door. It slammed shut, severing a wispy tendril, which evaporated instantly. The woman on the other side of the door howled again. Where's the priest? Micah asked with nervous excitement. He was gone. He vanished into thin air once the door was closed. A sound echoed through the nave, another door. Who's there? shouted a fearful man's voice. Brianna, still in shock, took a moment to recognize it. Father Gregory, she cried, back here. A flashlight's beam appeared from the vestibule and Father Gregory emerged in his pajamas. He must have heard the commotion from the parsonage next door. Brianna imagined he'd seen the collapsed ladder and calculated the rest on his own. Children, come, he ordered. He wasn't angry, just serious and concerned like he had been the day before. You must receive a blessing right away. Father Gregory passed blessings to Micah and Charlize before quickly ushering them out of the church. The cemetery creeps walked up the road in silence. When it came time for them to go their separate ways, they hugged each other goodbye. Micah left his dad's ladder laying on the church lawn. He decided he would tell his father it had probably been stolen if he was asked about it. He decided then and there that he would never go near St. Michael's again. Charlize and Brianna felt the same way. None of them wanted to know what happens when the white woman catches you.